Welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. Today is going to be a fun episode with Jared Bernstein, Territory Manager of Vortex Optics, and my buddy, the glassing guru, Cody Nelson, the Optics Manager at GoHunt.com. Guys, how you doing on this July 3rd? Doing good. I mean, it's. Are you, kid, I mean, are you kidding me? We're, we're one step closer to hunting seasons. That's true. I think about that every day. I was thinking about that on my hike this morning. Um, you guys are both in Arizona, and uh, Jared, before the podcast went live, was telling me that finally the old Arizona sun is, is kind of rearing its head because June was a fairly mild uh, weather month for Arizona, which I can remember as a kid. Uh, playing golf tournaments and playing outside. Sometimes it'd be 115, 118 degrees, but it seems like June was very, very mild, but it sounds like it's uh, starting to heat up around there. Yeah, it, it's, it's definitely gotten definitely hot. hot. <laughs> yeah, it definitely got hot. And I don't want to hear anything about your golf being I had a sweater on this hiking. morning when I was hiking? Yeah, you had a vest and a, you know, a hoodie. Yeah, yeah. Had a, you you want to know what you did to me the other day? Jared, you want to know what he did to me? He knows that we're 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 here in Arizona Bloody. suffering, <laughs> and he's on the golf course, and he and he puts the phone down. He says, "Hey, can you hear me?" And I said, "Yes." And all of a sudden, I hear this, and he's like, <laughs> "I'm like, did you just hit a golf ball?" And he put the phone right down next to the golf ball, and actually <laughs> played the entire hole with me listening to him. Like right next to every time he took a stroke. Yeah, but I'm the friends at four. I mean, I'm that guy yeah. with the with the folks in Wisconsin. When I talk to the team in at Vortex in like February, when they're all shoveling, you know, shoveling snow yeah. and wearing six, seven jackets to work, and I I always like to go out and take a picture of my cell phone with my shovel, and it's like 70 degrees, and I let the sun shine on it, and I always send a picture that says, "Out here shoveling sunshine, just thinking of you guys." You, know? <laughs> exactly. you gotta have love friends like that. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah. it. I do have to tell a quick story. So the other day, not the day that I did that to you, Cody, but I was playing with my friend here, 76 years old, Eldine Tucker, and uh, we had a good match going. We just play on the little baby par three course here, so we're not allowed to play the big boy course yet. But um was going along, and I think I was one down. Anyway, a 100-yard hole, I pull out a sand wedge, and I made a hole-in-one. So it was my third hole-in-one that I've made. And I was like, oh, That's my good. goodness, that was awesome. And I followed it up on the next hole with a nice, shiny double bogey. So it pretty much uh, <laughs> took the high that I was on and dropped me right back and right where I deserve to be on the golf course for sure, down in the dumps. Yep. Golf has a funny way of making you feel like the greatest in the world and the worst in the world. All yeah, about, in the, all about 300 minutes. yards. Yeah, exactly. Well, guys, it's going to be fun to uh, chat. The last time we talked, uh, we were uh, all together, and we basically did an overview of all of the Vortex Optics products. And I know, Cody, uh, you as the optics manager there at Go Hunt, uh, I know uh, Vortex plays a huge role in uh, the sales uh, and the, the calls that you field every day from people looking for uh, different types of optics, whether it be binoculars, spotting scopes, uh, rifle scopes, range finders, what have you. And Jared, uh, for those people that didn't listen to that podcast, I encourage them to do that. Uh, but you're the territory manager uh, for Vortex. But before that, uh, like we talked about on the other podcast, uh, I'd like you to briefly tell us about uh, your past history uh, in the service to our country. And, you know, with tomorrow being Fourth of July and being, you know, we celebrate the independence of our country uh, and, you know, uh, breaking away from England. Uh, and then we had, you know, Memorial Day, at, you know, a couple months ago in May. Uh, guys that, that uh, men and women out there that serve their time and serve our country are very dear to my heart. But uh, tell us a little bit about your experience uh, in the service and your background and then how it led you to being a territory rep. Uh, manager for Vortex Optics. Sure. Yeah, and no, I, I appreciate the chance to do that, Jay. I, you know, the, the service in the Marine Corps is one of my proudest 
accomplishments, and it sounds a little cliche, but it's it's pretty neat to belong to a group of people that have volunteered to go fight, and that's one of the, the yep. most unique portions of, of the American military is that um, at this point in our history, at this point in our timeline, we are a 100% volunteer force, and so to stand next to people that, that hold those values and to uh, do it for people that hold the values the way that you're describing is, is just a, I mean, it's nothing but an honor. Um, I did do four years in the Marine Corps. I deployed back in 2010. Conveniently, um, July 4th was actually my first combat drop, uh, the first piece of ordinance that I took part in that, um, that went into country and did its job. So July 4th is a pretty cool day for me. I'm actually sitting here holding the arming wire from that bomb. I like to get it out and dust it off this week every year and just remember the guys that were there and the stuff we did. And um, that deployment was, uh, was a pretty special one. So, But uh, other than that, I, I got out of the Marine Corps and, and ended up out in Arizona. Um, we talked a little bit about it. I chased a girl out here, ended up marrying her, so it worked out. <laughs> and ended up, in the, ended up in the firearms industry, was working in, in black gun shops and tactical shops and um, had an opportunity to go work for Vortex as a, as a rep and ended up falling in love with hunting through the job. Um, no one in my family really hunted. My grandfather had, uh, he had killed, I think, one white-tailed deer back in the 60s, and, and that was really the extent of my family's hunting. So I got exposed to it and, and honestly fell in love with the people, um, kind of getting away from that macho precision rifle realm that, that kind of develops every now and then. And so it's not that that's a bad group of, of people and there's some, some excellent humans running around in there, but I just found a niche within the hunting world that, that filled a gap for me. And it was, you know, it was some of the camaraderie I was missing from the military. Some of it was just the, the downright pain you put yourself through and grabbing a bow and trying to stalk an animal and, and just like-minded individuals that were up for, for a hard task. And, and so for me, the hunting world has, has kind of filled a, filled that gap. So yeah, it's, it's a neat it's a neat week. It's a neat time to reflect on military service and be thankful for what we have and the people that have given it to us. And then uh, in this country that we get to live in every day, you know, it's it's a little bit of a soup sandwich sometimes. But man, we're the luckiest people alive, and there's just no there's no ifs ands or buts about it. That's absolutely Agreed right. Couldn't that. agree with you more. Yeah, yeah. Agree um, on that. Th and thank you again for your service and congratulations. You're days away, hours away potentially from having. Uh, a child, and I know your wife's about ready to pop, and so thanks for coming on and spending some time with us. Uh, I want to uh, talk about the UHD, the, the uh, Vortex Razor UHDs. Uh, you know, I'm hearing all kinds of great stuff about it, and I just want you, Jared, just, you know, you and Cody, just talk about these new UHDs and, you know, it's, I mean, it's really kind of the talk of the town. Everyone's wanting to know about them. So I thought the best thing is get you two guys on a podcast and let's, uh, let's chat about it and uh, see where we go. So uh, with that, I'll give you the floor, Jared, to talk about uh, the new product, these new UHD binoculars. Awesome. Awesome. We appreciate the opportunity, Jay. You obviously have a, uh, an incredible following. I hate to use the word cult, but your knowledge base and the, the way that people that you bring on are uh, are massive in the industry. So it's really neat to have the opportunity to do that. The the UHDs for us um, are, are kind of uncharted territory. It's it's definitely new water to to get up into that higher end world to use the Abbey Koenig Prism system, which has its own set of challenges and and then rewards. Uh, but what we were finding is, and Cody can speak to this too, there's, there's a couple different types of people. There's guys that, um, that want to afford the, the top three that maybe not be able to, but they are doing the type of hunting that, that requires that piece of glass or at least something very close to it. Uh, and then we were finding people that, that just can't sit behind a spotting scope for one reason or another, whether it be fatigue or they, they only want to carry one system or they just can't, simply can't make things out with a spotter. And so those 15s and 18s and 20s appeal to those to those individuals, and so to release a UHD uh, binocular series using that Abbey Koenig prism in different powers uh, was just to fit a bill and, and at a request of the consumer. And so within that realm, within that series, there's an 8 by 42, a 10 by 42, a 12 by 50, 
and then an 18 by 56. And that, that 1856 is one that I get questions all the time attending events in Arizona was, hey, we need something more power than a 1250 in the razor line. And I, if I had a dollar for every time I heard that, uh, I don't know. It, it, it'd yeah, be a substantial was, chunk of change. That was always a, that was always a common, common, common question. Yeah. So the 18 is, is definitely one that from a Western hunting standpoint, from a, being a Western Territory rep standpoint, I'm excited about the 18, and I'm excited about the whole series in general just from an optical superiority standpoint, being that Vortex is getting into that higher-end world, which obviously we have the manufacturing capability and the internal capability to do so. Um, I'm excited to see where it goes, and, and obviously being selfish from a Western hunting standpoint, this product applies to us more than, say, my counterpart in Pennsylvania. So... I'm uh, I'm I'm really excited to see where it goes, and the and the response has been extremely positive. I mean, you know, barring some of the price stuff, where this is you know a higher price point than we've been in before, um, everything else has been has been quite positive in response. And honestly, once guys look through them, the price thing isn't even an issue. It's just an initial little bit of a shock that that Vortex is about playing in that world. So, yeah, a couple it, of questions it, it, that I would have. Go ahead, Cody. No, no, you're fine. Go ahead, Jay couple questions that I would have are UHD is ultra high definition. Um, so the, the number one question people are going to ask are what is the difference between the standard razor binocular and the UHDs? Uh, obviously, I haven't had a chance to look through uh, both of them side by side and compare them, but you guys have. Um, I mean, are you noticeab noticeably seeing, you know, a huge difference in, in clarity or, you know, what, what is, in your opinion, making the, you know, ultra high definition, you know, what are you picking out that's, that's you know, they're $1,000 more, what, what are you seeing that's making them that much better? Yeah, so the, the use of the Abiconic prism is what's doing that, and that prism design creates an optically superior image versus the standard design that we use, the standard roof prism, or even going back into a poro prism. Um, this, this prism design, the way, that it, the way that it transmits or bends light, the way that it produces an image is, is optically superior. Now, what you get, and a lot of the price difference is because it is a manufacturing task. It is, a, it is harder and more expensive to manufacture. It's a little bit larger. So yeah, you it's, do it's get a, it's a longer increased prism. weight. Correct. So you get increased size of the unit to a company or um, factor in, but um, that, that's where the cost is coming from, is that manufacturing and the, the prism design and the larger unit. But it does, you know, the trade-off is you're getting an optically superior product. Um, Cody, having looked through them, I'll let you hit on kind of what yeah, you no, feel. Yeah, no, I... I, I I think the first thing that comes to mind is, is I just feel like it's a, it, it's an immediate crispness and sharpness. Um, I mean, just firsthand right off the bat, and the edge to edge clarity is, you know, is I think uh, is is improved. Um, and you know, I think all these, I hate to put percentages on stuff, but you know, I think it's a common question. And you know, if I said things were you know five to ten percent better, I think I think what people should realize is that that five to ten percent is a huge number. Like so, if someone said it was you know two percent, you know, I mean, even that's a good improvement. But you know, when you jump into those levels, I mean, I, I don't know what the proper number is, but it was apparent to me from the first time looking through them that these were an improvement. You know, old versus new. It was immediate. And it, uh, I, I mean, I, when I first looked through those 18s and then having gone and compared them to the old ones, um, or I should say the Kaibabs, um, bottom line is it, it was immediate in, 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 in exacting that it was a, 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 a newer, better piece of glass, period. Yeah, and I, I think the eye cups on the UHDs are really helping with that too. I know a lot of people had some complaints on the Kaibab 1856s that the eye cups were a little uh, thick. And, yeah. you know, there's, there's always some guy that, 
you know, stuff works for, and then there's a couple of us that it doesn't work for, and, and that's going to happen. That's why diversity and competition within the industry is great because you find something that works for that person. But um, the Kaibab had that complaint quite often, and so using the the sharper, thinner eye cups on the Razer UHDs, I think, was an excellent call on on a uh, on our engineers' part, and that just it just improves the the image quality for sure. How do you feel? Um, you know that. Obviously, there's no 15 by 56. There's an 18 by 56. So there's 12. There's obviously eight, 10 by 42s, 12 by 50s, and 18 by 56. Um, do you think by jumping to that 18 by 56, did they feel like you know maybe the uh, you know Zeiss uh, Swarovski like uh, you know with the 15 that there was that they could fill that void of having three more power? Um, and going with the 1856, I mean, uh, I'm sure you were, you know, probably wondering the same thing. I wonder if it's, you know, just trying to get three additional power and, and have a leg up on, on the competition. I think, I think that could be, could definitely be part of it. You know, staying in my swim lane, I wasn't part of the team that developed them. I honestly can't tell you exactly why, but from a, from a standpoint of just sitting here and, and uh, being the guy that gets to go out and sell them, I think that it was a little bit more toward bridging the gap between 12s and a spotter. Um, and that was the thing that we got asked all the time was, I, I just, I like your spotters. Even, you know, I like them, I can afford them. I just can't look through them. I get a headache. I don't like squinting. I don't like closing one eye, whatever it was. And so exactly, um, I, I would think that more of the reason the 18 exists, not necessarily to as a chest puffing procedure, and I know that's not what you were implying, Jay, but um, sure. I think it's more a pure standpoint of just trying to bridge the gap between 12s and a spotter. Um, and well, I think that's, that's what most what people is being are, well received. You know, when people are talking about them, I mean, to me it's a numbers thing. And, you know, your exit people on a regular set of 15s or Kaibabs, you know, is, is 3.73 or something like that. And so, um, and for people that don't know what exit pupil is, is that it's the width of the band of light that's actually reaching your eye. Well, it, it, you've got a 3.73 on the 18s, and then if you go to a 15, you're at, oh, I'm sorry, 3.73 on the 15s, and then you drop down to a 3.1 on the 18s. And so, um, you know, there's a couple things to weigh out. Um, because the, the question I got this morning was, is, well, isn't that going to make your image darker? And, yes, that absolutely, you know, that absolutely could happen. And, and, and your image technically will be a little bit darker. Um, but then you're also going to have a wider field of view with the 15. Um, but, you know, it, it depends on what somebody's looking for. If somebody's looking for the power and they want more detail, um, it, it, I, I think this is absolutely going to bridge those gaps. Um, there are some people that are going to still want the old 15. Um, and, and again, it, it comes back to being able to, you know, to understand what it is you want and need and how these are going to fill that for you. So, um, you know, we've already sold a bunch of the 1856s and, and, uh, and people, you know, um, I, I'm just starting to get feedback. Um, and these are people that had not been able to look through them at all. And the feedback has been fantastic. So they were like, these are way better than I thought. These are way better than what, you know, the, the Kaibabs were. And, you know, we're elated that, that this happened. So, um, yeah, I, I think the 1856 is going to be, you know, probably, you know, that – you know, it is, it, for for our customers, I think it's going to be the the star of, of the UHDs. So that's what I was going to yeah. ask next is with that four, you know, four um, product setup with the 8x42, 10x42, 1250, and the 18x56, that's what I was going to ask you both, and you might have different answers. What What do you think the standout will be as far as, you know, overall sales? Which one... Uh, do you think will sell the most? And obviously, uh, Jared, your answer may be different than Cody, so I'm interested in that perspective. Yeah, Jay, so, you know, uh, the best seller out of those, you know, I, just in the trends, 
you know, the 1250 and the 1856 are, are they're going to be my guests in this series. Um, it's hard to leave out the, the 10 by 42s only because, you know, typically 10 by 42s are the most sold binocular at any price, you know, point or, you know, uh, uh, quality or... That's um, all around. That, it, it's just all around. We sell way more 1042s of the, of everything than than. So we could end up selling a lot of 1042s, but I, I think that the that the 1856s and the 1250s are are certainly going to kind of give each other a run for their money. Um, you know, right now I right now the the 1856s are 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 leading, but you know the 1250s could catch up at any moment. So. Um, you know, the season will, will, will actually tell us, you know, what's going on. And, you know, Jared, I don't know where you feel on that yet, but um, that's uh, that's what my thoughts are. Yeah, I'll give you my, my initial um, reaction, and then I'll give you kind of where, I, where it's just proving to go. I mean, the, the hard facts of what I'm seeing come across my desk. But um, initially, after seeing weights and prices and those things, and with the fact that we did keep the original Razor HD line in play, um, I expected the 1856 and the 1250 to really fill that tripod-mounted Western Hunter role. Um, I expected it to eat a little bit into the 1250 sales of the current Razor, but I expected people to still go to the old Razor 1042 and 842 from a chest binocular standpoint simply because of size. I think that's just a reality of of using that abiconic prism is that we can't expect everyone to want to carry that um, slightly larger unit around. But I'll be perfectly honest, the more demos I've done in the last couple of weeks, the more people that see the 10s and the 8s um, in the new UHD, I'm getting a lot of guys saying, man, I'm really excited about this because now I have access to something on my chest that's just optically superior to what I was carrying before. And as much as a lot of us, you know, I'm a, I'm a, a backpacker and a pack rafter and a backpack hunter and, and all those things, and weight is obviously a concern to a point. And I think there's certain things in your system or in your gear that you just need to maybe just renew the gym membership and get a little stronger well, and put, put it, the, you know, the back it up. Yeah, Jared, I've, Jared I've, <laughs> I've always referred to that as what I call good weight. Yeah, and there's just certain products, certain things in your in your gear bag. You know, it may be a tripod, it may be optics, it may be your gun. But Jared, I've always referred to that as what we call good weight. You know, your gear, your bag. Um, there's always that stuff that's you know is a little heavier, but it doesn't matter because you know it it could be confidence that it gives you. It could be a lot of things, but you know some of them are are going to be heavier because, and you're okay with it because you know they're, they're built well and they're stable. And, and let's not forget that when you have a little bit of added extra weight, when you put that on a solid tripod, it just makes for a more steady product or, you know, a viewing experience. So I'm not, like, I'm all for lightweight and I'm all for, you know, where, where it needs to be. I mean, good Lord, I, I mean, I can work on myself and, and, and be lighter weight, but, you know, I, I know that. But when it comes to gear, there's just certain things that I'm not willing, you know, to, to shave pounds off of it because I know what I'm getting in, in the performance. And I think that, you know, this line of binoculars is one of those kind of products. And that's exactly where, exactly where I'm going with it. And I like the good weight terminology. I'm going to have to steal that one from you. I was using your... Uh buy the best glass you can afford, put it on a tripod and slow down thing the other day. So I do owe you a couple of dollars for using that hey, one. But Hey, no, no um, not a problem. That's perfect. Don't forget so, my cut in that. <laughs> I, got, I got two envelopes right here on my desk. So, yeah, it's, Jared, it's just, one question I would much, have for you. Go ahead. I've just seen a much more positive response to the 8s and the 10s in the UHD than I expected. And that's, and that's cool. I mean, that's the best scenario to be wrong in, right? Um, sure. It, it's just been, it's been an extremely positive. And then including we, we did put a premium bino harness in with all four of those, so you're getting a very quiet uh, soft shell material type bino harness that comes with all the yeah. UHDs. And so there's just some extreme added value to the whole package that, that's just been, it's been well received all the way across the board. And so 
I'm again, I'm just so, excited to see where where it goes. Uh, Jared, on the point of the the uh, the case and and the bino harness, we've been inundated with questions just about the bino harness, and everybody's wanting this, and and I'm wondering. You know, at one point, are, is you know, is uh, is Vortex going to consider, you know, selling that on its own? Because I mean, the response to us has been, has been, you know, I mean, I'm talking ten, fifteen phone calls, you know, in the last week, and I, I I'm sorry, but I'd say that's a pretty high amount. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting awesome. it as well. I I don't know if it's going to be or not, to be honest, but I I am getting it as well. Yeah, I, I I thought that was really interesting. There's a there's a lot of people want to know more about that. So which which is good for them, but you know, being that it's a, a product that comes, and I think we should state for the record that the the bino harnesses that you're seeing in in some of our uh, our content, those bino harnesses are, are are you know come with the product, and that's the the question that everybody's asking is is can I get one of those by itself? And the answer to that question is, is that they are not standalone, sell, you know, by themselves products. Jared, one question I'd have for you is, do you think the UHDs, there'll be some cannibalism between the two different lines, between the regular HD, you know, the razors and the UHDs? Um, obviously, the, the price point uh, is higher on the UHDs. And I'm just curious, you know, what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, I, I do think that there's going to be some decisions that have to be made on the consumer end. You know, if they're after the, you know, and I keep using the term optically superior because that's exactly what the UHDs are. If they're after the most optically superior product that Vortex currently produces, um, that's, that's one thing, that's one qualifying aspect of that customer. If they say, I want the lightest Razor HD in the series, then then obviously talking about the older HD versus the UHD has some um, has some potential. From a price point standpoint, I, I don't think the UHDs are pricing anybody out of it that was already considering a Razor. Yes, they are. You know, if we compare the 1250s, just if you were to go in the Go Hunt Gear Shop right now, the 1250 UHD should be about five hundred dollars more than the current Razor 1250. Um, so five hundred dollars is obviously a substantial amount of money, but most guys that are already looking at higher end glass in that thousand dollar range, I have to imagine that they're not going to balk too much at at least considering the positives to jumping up into that to that UHD. But I, I do truly believe that that it just depends on that end user. If it's a guy that's cutting the handle off his toothbrush, he may be turned off by a UHD, or he may cut the handle off his toothbrush to justify carrying a UHD. I think that it, it completely depends on that person. And, and again, I think we talked about this in the first time that I sat with you guys. One of the best things that Vortex does is there's very rarely a customer whose needs can't be um, filled throughout our product line. I think our engineers and our design team has done a great job of, of making sure that we don't have to turn a customer away um, based on on what their needs are, whether it be I need a range finding binocular, or I want the I don't care about weight, I want the clearest image I can get, or I want something extremely lightweight. So uh, I think that I do think that there's only so many people out there that are going to buy a thousand dollar plus binocular, and so could the older razors see a little bit of cannibalism? Yeah, maybe, uh, but I don't think that it'll be very noticeable. I think that people have a set of standards they're trying to hit. And I think we do a really good job of making sure we have a product somewhere in the line that'll hit that hit that goal for them. Well, it, I, 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 think I don't think it'll be a huge deal. I, I think it's it's I think it's a plus, um, in the sense that I, I just think that it gives you know uh, you know our consumers our buyers basically just more choice. And I think when you have, you know, I mean, let's let not forget that you know the the. The, the regular um, Razor product for, you know, uh, since GoHunt's been, or I mean, I'm sorry, since Vortex has been, you know, selling optics has always been kind of their premium. And the fact that we've added to it, that doesn't, that doesn't to me, it doesn't say anything bad about the, the, the other Razors. It just means that they were able to, you know, squeeze more performance out of, you know, a, a newer binocular. And I... I I think when you give somebody more choice, 
and you give a, a salesperson more choice. And when someone talks about their needs or they talk about their budget or they talk about the job at hand, you know, and because I still think that the Razor 10 by 42 is a very compact, um, it's one of my favorite ergonomically weighted, you know, in size, the 1040s on the market or 1042 on the market. So I, I think this, the fact that it's given people choice, um, I think it just helps us, you know, fill people's needs and wants better. You know, one thing that jumps out at me, guys, is, you know, I've been very, very happy with Swarovski Optics for many, many years, but i got to be honest with you. I mean, I love the scrappiness of the Vortex company. I love the fact that in my mind these UHDs are, I mean, going directly after, you know, Leica, Zeiss, Swarovski in that high-end binocular range. Um, you know, I, I really like the scrappiness of an American company that's like, hey, we are going to, you know, step right into the middle of your breakfast and uh, try and, you know, turn the table over. I think, I think when it's all said and done, this UHD line, I honestly think is going to, it's going to really jump up and some surprise some people. And quite honestly, as a consumer, I love the scrappiness of, you know, trying to dive right into that. Um, you know, it's not something that they did right off the bat. I think they built a huge customer base. I think they built a, you know, a huge loyal following. And they're just, they're like, okay, we can jump into the, you know, super high-end market um, and still, you know, still provide them at a very reasonable price. So, I mean, I, I love the scrappiness of the company. Uh, curious your thoughts on that, Jared. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I mean, I'm proud to be a part of it. I, uh, I, I like that. I, I like the approach as well. And I think you really hit the nail on the head with not just going after it at first. Really understanding optics. Really understanding the market. Getting a ton of consumer feedback, and that's one of the best things that Vortex does is they take consumer feedback and they put it in a pile and they continue to add to it and they continue to analyze it. It's not a a back closet pile. It's a pile on very important people's desks and, you know, decision makers that have the ability to take those, those comments and those concerns and those suggestions and compile them into something like a Razor UHD. And so, yeah, I, I, think, that, I think that Vortex does better than, than many of the other brands that list native consumers, and that's where products like this came from, and that's where products are continue to come from. There's, there's other exciting stuff in the works for the hunting world that, that is just nothing but consumer feedback hey, this would make my hunt better type comments, and we're going to run with it. We're going to continue to run with it. Um, the consumer is the greatest resource. There's, there's no doubt about it. We can send, you know, if you send me out, I have my fixed opinions on things. You send Cody out, Cody has his, his deal. But when you listen to the whole consumer market, you're able, to, you're able to really hit that giant piece of the pie. And so I think our guys and, and gals do a, a really good job of that. You're going to continue to see it. And uh, we're going to ride it as far as we can ride it. Yeah. But I, I, I just love the choices. You know, and, and for a guy that, and, you know, Jared, you know, you're, you're a vendor. And you're, as, I don't know that you're in front of the customers as much as I am, but it's pretty darn close. So it's really fun that you're able to literally listen to a person, listen to their needs. And, and literally have more at your disposal to help that person out. And so yeah. I'm really excited about that. That in, in if Vortex is going to continue to do that, uh, I'm I'm a big fan. It comes up all the time. I mean, it's just a the passion behind simply listening to the people that you then want to sell it to is is nothing but a pure intent. And and so it's it seems to be working out, at least from what I can tell. Guys, I want to take just a quick second here to thank the sponsors of this podcast. I want to tell you about GoHunt.com Insider. For the month of July, they are doing a 30-day free trial of the GoHunt Insider. So all you have to do is go to GoHunt.com forward slash J. Scott, sign up for the 30-day free trial. That means you can go on. You can put in all of your favorite states, all of your favorite units, all of your favorite animals, and you can research. You can check out how 
If you haven't been an Insider member before, you can check out all of the draw odds. You can go back and compare different years. You can go back and compare success rates. Uh, you can read about the strategy articles. Uh, you have full access. So go to gohunt.com forward slash jscott, and that gives you a 30-day free trial of the full Insider. So if you've been wondering about the Go Hunt Insider, this is your chance for a free trial. Uh, go check it out. I also want to tell you about, uh, obviously, uh, Go Hunt is uh, the optics department. The gear shop is a sponsor of this podcast. And we did a giveaway in the month of June. And basically, if you bought anything from the Go Hunt gear shop, if you spent $12, you got dollar for dollar entry into a thousand dollar gift card drawing. So if you spent $12, you got 12 entries. If you spent $2,500, you got 2,500 entries, um, and it, that has been an amazing success in June, and they're actually doing it again here in July. So that giveaway is, is valid. Uh, all you have to do is go to the Go Hunt Gear Shop. When you check out, all you have to do is enter the code JSCOTT19, and you're going to be entered into that drawing. Now, you can also call Cody Nelson right here on this podcast my friend of 25 years, you can call Cody and you can say, hey, I want to buy this, that, or the other. So you can buy optics. You can buy anything in the Go Hunt gear shop. You can buy a sleeping bag, whatever it is you want, and just tell them, I want to be entered into the J. Scott, the J. Scott 19 drawing, and you'll be eligible for that $1,000 gift card. I want to thank Go Hunt for their sponsorship of this podcast. I also want to thank Kuyu Ultralight Hunting, uh, KUIU.com is where you can go for more information. That is the ultralight hunting gear that I use on all of my hunts. I want to thank Kuyu. I also want to thank Phonescope. Uh, go to Phonescope.com. Use the JSCOT19 promo code. You're going to get a 10% discount. All of the photos and videos that you see of elk and sheep and all the different things on my Instagram, that's, most of it is through the Phonescope digiscoping adapter uh, I use with my iPhone 10. Uh, and it's a uh, you know, great way to get up close and personal with some of these animals. You're listening to this podcast with Jared Bernstein with Vortex, so uh, you can use phone scope on these uh, Vortex uh, spotting scopes and binoculars. I want to thank phone scope for their sponsorship, and last but not least, uh, Onyx Hunt, uh, onyxmaps.com. If you go to onyxmaps.com, use the jscott19 promo code, you're going to save 20%. I want to thank all of the sponsors. I want to thank you guys for supporting this, uh, the sponsors and supporting this podcast. Guys, the last time we were together, I want to take a, a quick detour here. The last time we were together, we talked about the Vortex 4000 rangefinder and it had literally, I think the one that you had on the table, Jared, was one of the only ones, uh, it, you know, it was like one of the only ones around in the Southwest. Uh, that's been a couple months now, and, and the, the response has been very, very good. Jared, from your perspective, uh, how has the uh, 4,000 been received? And then, uh, Cody, you can follow up on that. Absolutely, the the four thousand is doing great. Um, we're seeing it it work its way into a couple different markets. Obviously, the hunting market enjoys it, and we all talked about, you know, four thousand yards is not a shot that we're taking, but it can be used as uh, a planning tool. Hey, you know, I'm on this knob, and I know this knob is eight hundred yards away, and I know the deer is another thousand yards past that, and so you can use the ranging capability to uh, have a more mm -hmm. effective stalk. We're also seeing um, the ELR community, the extended uh, long-range community, PRS community. Um, they're enjoying it because they do engage targets out to those types of distances. And so having an accurate rangefinder um, with, with HD glass and then a little bit more magnification, being that most rangefinders are a 6 power and the 4,000 is a 7, uh, we're just seeing a ton of positive feedback with uh, with those communities as well, and and if you kind of dive into that 4,000, there's some there's some modes in there that are that are used for different things. So obviously we still have our angle compensation, um, which we we refer to as HCD, uh, but there's also a couple other modes in there like the ELR or extended laser range, which is um, 
working off of a pulse and averages to give you a better, more accurate reading at distance. And so depending on what the, the end user is doing with that unit, we're just seeing a ton of a ton of positive feedback being that it's just so darn capable. So it's it's been great. They're they're consistently on back order, so something's gotta be going right. <laughs> yeah. And Cody from your perspective? Yeah, no, uh been very well received um by by our customers. Um, still selling them at a, at a fairly steady rate, and um, you know that's a. Uh, and Jared, I, I'm thank you for saying that because I didn't realize that, that they're on back order with you guys. <clears throat> uh, I still have some in stock, um, so um, I can help people out that way. Uh, but yeah, so um, the response back from them has been great. Um, and again, any time that you can give a person another choice, give them another piece of gear. And you can upgrade it, and you can show people those upgrades. Um, I I just love a product that that we can, you know, help put it in, in our customers' hands and and fill fill their needs. Um, it, it's been doing a really good job for that, and and I'm excited, you know, for the upcoming fall to hear, you know, all the stories and and hunts, you know, with people using them. Cody, we're, you know, in the beginning of July here, and everybody's getting fired up for the fall hunt, you know, a lot of the uh, dull sheep and, and the, you know, the, the up north sheep hunters uh, are, you know, going here in the next couple of weeks, uh, and that's kind of the, the beginning of what I would call, you know, the summer season, and then, you know, we start rolling into the archery deer hunts and antelope and archery elk and all the different things of the fall. Uh, right now, we're kind of in that period where people are really uh, looking at uh, different choices for gear, uh, optics, and, and what have you. Uh, you know, talk a little bit about, you know, over the next couple of months, how your days go as far as, you know, talking with customers every day and kind of the trends that you see kind of, you know, July and stuff starting to ramp up and a lot of purchases being made here and you know, mid-July, late July, on into August, uh, people well, getting ready for these hunts. Jared, it's, <clears throat> excuse me, my, my days are literally, um, you know, from 8 in the morning till 6 o'clock at night. Generally speaking, I'm on the phone with customers. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes more, sometimes a little less, but the, the thing I, it's interesting because I just had a call before we started the podcast and the guy was wanting to know about, um, uh, 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 trekking bowls, and you know, I gave him all the knowledge I have of them, all the 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 stuff, and I and, and it just it was an interesting comment that he made. He says, you know, he says I love the fact that you guys put all the the content out, and I've watched all the videos. But he said, literally, the fact that I can call you, and he says, you explained it in such an easy manner. And now I know what I feel, what I think is important to me, that I can go make these, you know, choices and, and put stuff. I, you know, he's already putting stuff in his shopping cart as we were talking. And, and he just, I think it's just the fact that, that we're accessible and that we're willing to help people. And that, that, that I think it's kind of a trust and a confidence. You know, the people trust us, but it puts confidence in their buying. And, um, and and quite frankly, I, I think that's a um, I, I, there's just people that don't want to spend time with their customers, and and, um, and 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 we're willing to do that. And I think that I think that speaks volumes about what we're trying to do. And uh, and I, we get compliments every single day, um, you know, just with the fact that man, it's so nice to be able to talk to somebody and you know that really knows what they're doing and talking about and. And, you know, it, it, it might be the smallest, most mundane, you know, part that we have in our entire gear shop, but they're, they're happy because somebody in our, in, in, in our organization, you know, we've chosen those, you know, those products because we've used them and we believe in them and, you know, we know how to use them. So um, it's, it's just nice that, uh, that, 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 that we get that kind of feedback because it really, you know, it's, it, it's what keeps us doing what we're doing. You know, and, and Gohan is there to, you know, provide, you know, the best buying experience possible, you know, for our customers. That's awesome, Cody. Yeah, I know I get a lot of feedback from, from people on my Instagram page uh, saying, you know, they've talked to you 
uh, multiple times and they finally made their decision on what they were buying and you helped them out so much. So my hat's off to you for the great customer service that you provide. I do want to remind the listeners, uh, if you need to call Cody, I encourage you to do that, 702-847-8747, extension 2. You can also send an email to optics at gohunt.com, uh, and those uh, emails go directly to Cody. Uh, the phone calls go directly to Cody. Um, I appreciate all the work that you do. Don't forget to enter into the July $1,000 gift card drawing. Anything you purchase at GoHunt, whether on, uh, gohunt.com, on the website, through the, you know, the gear shop, or calling Cody, just enter jscott19. You're going to be entered into that uh, $1,000 gift card giveaway. Uh, Jared, it's been awesome always having you on the podcast. Um, appreciate, again, your service to our country. Uh, but, you know, really appreciate as well just um, how forthright you are, uh, how well-spoken you are, and how much passion you have. Uh, for the company that you work for and the products that they create. And it, it always brings great value to the, cus- to the listeners and the customers uh, out there. And um, they've got a really good guy uh, working for Vortex. And um, I'm, I'm proud of the work that you do. So just thanks for coming on and sharing with here, us here. Uh, today. Oh, thank, I won't thank you. you. We, we, appreciate the, we appreciate the opportunity. It's What's that, Cody? I, I won't bug you, Jared, as, as, as much as possible. I'll, I'll, I, I won't call you 12 times a day. Only if no, I need call to. me. Hey, as long as you're in 12 orders so, today, I'll always answer your call. Hey, Jay, <laughs> I also should probably tell you, um, you know, for our listeners, because I know you're going to release this pretty quick, um, for people that don't know, get on the website, jump on there, um, you know, over the 4th of July weekend here, and look for uh, the 4th of July sale that's going on right now. Um, there's a myriad of different products on sale, so uh, um, just uh, get on the website and search them out, and and uh, you'll notice that there's there's a bunch on there that you can get some really good deals on right now. Awesome! Thanks for bringing that up, guys. As always, it's great having you on. Uh, God bless you both, and uh, hope you have a good day tomorrow with your family celebrating our country's independence. And um, it's it's a it's a great time of year. And I know everybody's starting to really anticipate all the hunts coming up this fall, you know, especially here in the Southwest where we've had so much moisture and there's just a lot of optimism out there. And it's great to see everyone passionate about what they do. And, uh, you know, hats off to both of you for, for uh, doing the great jobs you do with your companies respectively and, and uh, sharing, sharing your knowledge here on the podcast. So until next time, guys, God bless. Okay. Yeah. Jay, thank you for the opportunity, bud. It's always appreciated. All right, Cody. Jared, take care, buddy. You too, Jay. Thank you so much.